Hello all, welcome back and in this series we have been calculating the uncertainties in our final results and in this final video in the series we are going to look at the case in which we are going to calculate the uncertainty in the timing experiments. So before digging into the calcu in, into calculating the uncertainty, um, let's, look at in, let's look at an example of timing experiment. <coughs> Sorry. So here we have a simple pendulum and it is a vibrating body and you need to calculate the time period of this simple pendulum. Now the time period is actually the time which this bob in simple pendulum will take in moving from point A to B and then back to A which will be one time period. So this is actually the measurement that you need to take using a stopwatch. And in, such, and in such timing experiments, we just don't measure the time for one oscillation. That wouldn't give you an accurate result. So first of all, you need to calculate, you need to measure the time, total time for, let's say, multiple oscillations, where one oscillation is moving from A to B and back to A. So let's say in this case, I measured the time, total time for 30 oscillations. And the time is... 54.6 second. I have calculated this time for 30 oscillations using this stopwatch, which has an absolute uncertainty or the least count of 0.1 second, least count of this stopwatch. Now, first of all, we need to calculate the time period of this simple pendulum, which can be calculated simply by dividing this time for 30 oscillations by 30. And it comes out as 1.82 second. Now is the time to go for the uncertainty. And keep in mind that the least count of the stopwatch is not going to be the uncertainty in your result. And here comes the rule for calculating the uncertainty in case of timing experiments. The rule says that you divide the least count of stopwatch by the number of oscillations. Simple. Now in this case, the least count of stopwatch is 0.1 second and the total number of oscillations are 30. So what you are going to do is divide 0.1 second by 30 and what you are going to get is 0 0.003 second. And note an interesting thing here, more, the more the number of oscillations that you are counting, the less will be your uncertainty in the final result. So in timing experiments to get more accurate results, you should take more and more oscillations time so that when you divide the number of oscillations by the least count of your device, you get the least possible uncertainty in your result. And in other words, your result is more accurate. So just we can combine our measurement with our uncertainty 1.82 plus minus 0 0.03 second and at this point you can see that there is a third decimal the uncertainty is going till the third decimal place but my measurement is not going till the third decimal place so in order to remove this anomaly you can simply write a zero here so that both are in harmony with each other and the number of decimal places in your uncertainty are equal to the number of decimal places in your measurement so that's all we are done with the with this specific topic and I wish you good luck with your exams and if you have any questions related to uncertainties or measurements or any concept that I have covered in my previous set of videos, you can ask that question in the comments section below. I would love to answer and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and I will see you in the next set of lessons.